At the Robotics Institute, which is spread out through several buildings on and off campus, there's too much to see and learn about. We were overwhelmed. We got to spend a few minutes with Matt Mason, who's the director of the Institute and a faculty member. So the Robotics Institute started about 1979. And uh, it was a new thing then, and everybody was excited about a uh, robotic revolution in manufacturing. It was done with money from Westinghouse Corporation, and, uh, but things really took off from there. Uh, the Robotics Institute is the only institution of its kind really in the whole world. And we have the first robotics PhD program. Uh, anybody in the world who has a doctorate in robotics right now, they came from Carnegie Mellon. That same day, we chatted a bit with Professor Howie Chosett. I came here because the Robotics Institute is the world's largest robotics research center. There's no other place like it in the world that has so many people, faculty, staff, and students dedicated to building and programming robots. So what we have here is one of our snake robots. It has 16 degrees of freedom, 16 joints, that it can use to crawl on the ground and climb pipes. We also got to meet with Takeo Kanadi, who helped establish the Robotics Institute and who's done important work on vision systems for robots. Why did I come here? I would say it's intellectual adventure. This Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon University, was the mecca of artificial intelligence in late 70s, 76 to 78. And I saw a, the real excitement of making machines intelligent. We met some students and artists who work with children and robots in education. One nice day, we watched Stephen Tully working on campus with his three red ball robots called 43, 44, and 45. They may eventually help find landmines. And not far away, in another building, professor of computer science Manuela Veloso and PhD candidate Stefan Sickler showed us some of their phenomenal soccer playing robots. So this is actually uh, a, what we call a team of robots. So these mechanical little creatures were built here at Carnegie Mellon, and uh, they are composed of motors and kickers and all sorts of what we call actuators, because they actuate changing the state of the world. In our particular case, they actuate by kicking balls and moving around. Some people say it's a toy domain, and. You know, it's true that it's, uh, there's no particular reason why we do soccer, or there's no big goal behind soccer, but the key is that the, the research that we do with these soccer playing robots also applies to possibly all other sorts of domains. Our tour of Pittsburgh robot sites also took us to Hazelwood, to the robot roundhouse. It's an old railroad shop left from the days of the steel mills, and there we got to meet Red Whitaker, who's the Fredkin Professor of Robotics and a living legend in the world of robots. I uh, chose Pittsburgh uh, to build this class of machines that I call field robots, uh, machines that operate in the world at large. Uh, what was needed was uh, a, uh, a place that had uh, a good future in computing, that had uh, an excellent industrial base, uh, where um, good people were available, where you could uh, start with not very much, uh, where you could build from nothing and uh, grow to the best uh, in the world. Uh, there have been no disappointments. Red said we could go for a ride in the car named Boss that drives itself. We bounced around and into the future on the flats of Hazelwood. Every great robot has a great robot name. If you're going into a volcano, then Dante is a good robot. And uh, if you're out to win a car race, it turns out that Boss is great. Uh, it's named for Boss Kettering, one of the greatest inventors in the automotive world. Uh, but the other is that uh, Boss has a little edge on it. Boss won the $2 million first prize in the 2007 DARPA Urban Challenge competition in California. Boss sees the world with a variety of lasers, cameras, uh, radars. Uh, on the lower corners are lasers that uh, are great for cornering and uh, then longer range to view the road ahead. Uh, on the top is the most unique of sensors which casts millions of laser points each second. 
and is able to look all 360 degrees around a horizon, just like a lighthouse. And that is the kind of sensor that is revolutionizing automated driving. This is state-of-the-art engineering. And robotics is really about engineering. I, I think of it as the, the uh, pinnacle of engineering, to try and build a system that actually can do even the things that humans and animals do, the most amazing and complex systems that, that we know of. It's so much fun. I don't understand how uh, people in other fields uh, can stand it. I'm, I'm surprised everybody doesn't want to come and do robotics.